What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the first episode in our playthrough of Terraria 1.3. A little bit of background on this series because this wasn't supposed to be a series on the channel. I woke up this morning and realized that I'm like five days ahead on every game that we're playing on the channel right now. And so I was left with an option. I could take a coveted day off and just kind of like snooze all day on my beanbag chair. Or B, I could jump into the saddle and do something extra for all of you. And I decided that we're going to play around with Terraria 1.3 today. 1.3 supposedly revitalizes the game and adds a whole bunch of new content that we've never seen before, including like expert modes and stuff like that. I'm going to be the first to say that I'm not very good at this game. I only have about 100 hours played, which sounds like a lot until you realize that a lot of people with Terraria have like 1,500 hours played. Like I have friends that still play the hell out of this game to this day, like every single day they boot it up and play it and they've got endless hours and they know everything there is to know, all the little secrets and whatnot. I'm going to be flying blind a little bit because honestly, I played the game when it first came out, but I haven't seen any of the updates since it came out on Steam. But this is one of those games that really sort of kicked off the indie revolution on Steam. And so I figured I wanted to play 1.3. I was going to be playing it anyway, so it's not that difficult for me to turn on a recording software and just go for it and do something extra for all of you. So without further ado, let's play Terraria. Now I promise this is probably not going to be the, the best playthrough you've ever seen but I almost said the blessed but I don't think that's definitely not a blessed playthrough not at all so let's go to new character and let's get ourselves all nice and designed up first I was gonna skip through all of this because I figured people would be bored with it but I thought what if there were like new features in the character creation so I'm gonna go with kind of like a dark brown color I'm gonna mute a little bit of the ginger color out of the hair right there and then let's choose a hairstyle they got the XCOM hairstyle right there if you want to go with like a dwarvish thing they got that it's pretty dope not sure if I want to be a dwarf today though Looks like we've got every manner of like comb over, bob, mohawk, princess Leia. I'll probably go with that one right there. Seems normal enough. The old classic comb over. I can't see his eyes. They're too small. And so I don't think changing that color around is going to matter. Skin I'm not going to fiddle with because every time I do that in Terraria, I end up with a character that's some kind of weird greenish pink color. And that just doesn't do it for me. I don't know. My character has to be aesthetically pleasing when I look at him. Otherwise, I'm just like, nah, I banish you to the recycle bin. And so let's get our clothes going. I, oh, there's style. What does that do? Oh, cool, we can have just like a t-shirt and pants. That is my normal style that I rock. Actually, if you turn those into sweatpants, it would be 100% accurate. I rarely get out of my sweatpants. It is what it is. There's, I don't know what that is. That looks like some kind of road warrior outfit. He's got like bracers or something. I can't really tell though. Oh, there's like a trench coat. That's pretty cool. I'm going to go with the trench coat for right now. I've never seen that graphic before. I'm going to make it green like so. And yeah, I really actually like that. I'm going to go towards a darker green though. Okay, so now that we got that for the undershirt... What color do I want his undershirt to be? Let's just go for like a white tank that he's got underneath that. And then for his pants, obviously in staying in theme with the funny of the channel, I'm going to say fetch me my brown pants. And so there it is, just in case we have any accidents in the field. Nobody will ever know. Shh, nobody will ever know. And then we've got shoes. You can't really see the shoes anyway, so I'm probably going to leave those matching. And I'm pretty happy with the way that we look right now. That was quick and easy. And then we got to choose whether male or female. We can go with soft core, medium core, or hard core. Probably go with medium core. Hardcore, I'm not good enough at the game, and I know I'll just disappoint all of you. The point of this series is just to get us into 1.3 and play around with it. I don't know if this is going to be a full series. If people end up really being super stoked about this game, and they're like, yeah, and they're like beating down the doors for more, then sure, I'll keep playing it. We'll do like 100 episodes, whatever people prefer. If it turns out to be kind of a ditherer, or at least I release it to a bunch of just like, Bzzz, and people aren't stoked about it, then we'll move on to something else. But at least I can say that I tried to cover 1.3. And so we got to name our character. I'm going to go with Hagglebottom. Yeah, that seems good. Hagglebottom! He only has 100 HP and 20 MPs. Okay, well, every now and again you need the military police, so it is what it is. Select the world. Oh, we don't have one, so we need to make one. I remember small was too small. Large was way too big back when I played, and so I'm assuming medium is going to be our Goldilocks. It's going to be just right. It's going to be our Huckleberry. And so I'm going to go with normal difficulty. Now, I'm not sure if Expert adds extra items to the game or anything like that. I didn't actually check to differentiate between the two difficulty settings. I assume that this one's probably better. Fortune and Glory. Far greater difficulty and loot. Hmm. So does it add new content if you go into Expert? Or is all the content in Normal, this just kind of like gives you cooler shit? Well... I guess what we can do is we can play on normal for a little while, and if we find that once our character gears up and gets a little bit better that it's too easy, we can then make an expert world and we can jump into that and we kind of use that as a segue into like the second half of the series if it ends up being popular. How's that sound? Agreed? Let's shake hands on it. Sure. I just digitally shook your hand. And then I'm going to name this world... Prox... Gak... 12. I always use weird names in Terraria. Something about Terraria, it's Prox Gak 12. Welcome to Prox Gak 12. Present forth your brain for scanning. 
I don't know, it makes me happy. It's going to create the world, and I'll see you in just a minute once we're in game, all right? All right, everybody, so welcome to Proxgat 12. Hagglebottom's taking a look around, and let's see what there is available to us. There's Andrew. Oh, they renamed him. He used to be called just, like, The Guide, right? Or did he always have a name? I don't know. What does this say? Happy. Movement speed increased and monster spawns reduced. Oh, that's pretty cool. Let's chop down some trees. Every survival game ever has taught me that if you're not getting wood at the outset of the game, then you're doing it wrong. And so I want to make sure that I'm doing it right rather than doing it left. Got to do it dextral, not sinistral. And so we'll grab that right there. Ooh, some acorns. Sure. Acorn, that corn, my corn, your corn. Works out for me. All kinds of corn, to quote Brack. And then we'll go over here. Oh, kinds of corn. I remember that song. I like corn. That was one of those references that, like, that show was not very popular. It was only on the air for a little while. It was from the Brack show. And it was kind of like a variety show with cartoons. It was a spinoff from Space Ghost. But anyways, it had Brack as a main character with his mom. And he sang a song in it one time called I Like Corn, where he just sang about the different kinds of corn that he liked. It was only on the air for, like, one season. And so that's going to be one of those references that I'm sure very few people are actually going to get. And as I say that, everybody in the comments now is going to be like, nope, nope, I knew about that show. I used to watch it religiously. And be like, I did too. It was actually part of my religion. We had a church of Brack and everything. So we start out with a pickaxe. We started out with an agile copper axe. What an axe needs to be agile for him. A legendary copper short sword. Well, that's pretty cool. All right, apparently maybe it was a gift from our father who was a great warrior or something along those lines. He was the greatest Minotaur in all the land. Why is our character not a Minotaur when our dad was a Minotaur? Dude, we're only half Minotaur and it didn't show up much in us. I don't know. Our sister, if you look at our sister, she totally looks like a Minotaur. But us, it's for some reason, I don't know, the genetics just didn't line up. We look more like a human than a Minotaur. But believe me, my dad, he was full Minotaur. I'm half Minotaur, so if I ever wanted to go to Minotaur College, I could get, like, tax write-offs and all that crazy stuff because obviously the indigenous Minotaurs had trouble when everybody came and kind of settled in their land. I'm like, all right, well, we'll let you go to college for free and that'll make it all better. Let's go off to this side to the left and what I like to do is I like to find the low-hanging fruit, the easy stuff. And what I mean by that is along the surface, you're going to find little ore nodes like these right here, where you're going to get very, very easy iron and very easy copper just by kind of like walking along the surface. And so what I want to get ourselves into is a little bit of trouble, but first I want to have armor. Oh, good. The guy that actually kills bad guys. I've never seen him do that. Can you jump in water right now? I'm a little bit worried. Oh, good. We made it across the chasm. I didn't want to drown in our first episode. I would have felt like an idiot. So let's go ahead and chop that right there. Yes, sir. There it is. On this side, I'm probably going to try and get... I don't know what wood stacks up to for right now, but this is probably going to be a little bit boring at the outset because I think we're going to need a lot of wood before we can actually accomplish anything. Maybe like 300, 400 wood and that'll get it done. Oh, my God. That hurts so much. My kitten just... I'm wearing shorts right now, and my kitten has gotten into this habit where he tries to climb my legs all the time like it's his favorite thing to do ever. He's just like, oh, look, legs and trees are the same thing. Therefore, I'm going to climb your human trunk. And so he just, like, goes for it. And unfortunately, I'm wearing shorts right now, and so he basically just tried to climb my flesh. And so now my flesh is hanging in nasty little ribbony shards, and it's all my kitty's fault. Let's go ahead and stab this guy right here if you're wondering. His name is Ollie, and I got a kitten... I guess four weeks ago or so. I got him when he was about six weeks old, and they said he was 12 weeks. So actually, I guess I've had him for a little bit over a month and a half now. I don't know. The little guy's been terrorizing my house for a couple of weeks now. And anyways, I'm trying to work out the bad habits in the kitten kinks, but unfortunately, they are deeply rooted in this one. He is stubborn as hell. Probably the most stubborn kitten I've ever seen. He's very, very stubborn. Does not like to give in and definitely loves to get his way. Chop down a couple more trees. I'm probably going to try and convert these into actually refined wood. What does a blue slime do? It's the Blue Slime group. They play drums, and they have little comedy routines. They perform in Vegas all the time. So it looks like we got a desert on our left. I like to explore a little bit and just figure out where the biomes are that I can be exploiting in the near future, because every biome has something different for you. I don't know what it has, but I assume that we can probably make glass out of the stuff that you find up in the desert. That slime's about to get us. Avast ye, knave, I fight thee and throw thee into the chasm that I have created with mine pick. Oh, nope. Back this way. Ah, stabbiter. I'm good at stabature. I've got like uh, 300 in stabature skill. There we go. And so now I love that little violin noise that it makes when you go into like the happy meadows. I was like, na, 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 na. it's all excited. I think that's clay right there, although I don't think we need clay right now. But this is precisely the reason why I always walk the surface. I think, oh no, this is going to end poorly, isn't it? This is going to end poorly. So we have two slimes coming in. Our spawns, unfortunately, are going to be a little bit weird because I'm playing the game in 1080p, which means that it allows you to, like, zoom your camera out further, but that also used to make the monsters spawn more frequently, if I remember right. Oh, no, he made the jump. I wasn't expecting that. No! 
Green Slime's got hops. Okay. Go ahead and get rid of you real fast. It's coming back. The muscle memory for how to fight all these things is definitely coming back. There we go. I get you with my stabby dagger. And so now you have been slain. I figure we should probably start building something. So I'm going to flatten out some land. Maybe... I don't know if I want to live next to water or not. I sort of do. But then if it rains, we risk flooding. And I don't know if I want to flood today. What's over on this right-hand side? Does this meadow just keep going forever? It looks like it does, so I'm probably going to pick this spot right here as our first building zone. So let's go real quick. I'm going to flatten all this out. And once it's been flattened properly, we'll build ourselves. I don't know if I want to make a tower or what I want to do with my house, but we'll play around with it. It's going to be a work in progress. It's probably going to be one of those series where I play a lot off camera and just do like random farming and things like that. So that I don't bore you with everything that we're trying to attempt right now. Realistically, I'd like to keep this one focused. I don't know if it's going to go exactly like that, but... We'll give it a try. Oh, yeah, to knock out back walls, you need hammers. I'm used to playing Starbound, where you can get everything with one click. Okay, so that background's going to stay there until I make myself a hammer. What can I do? So if I've got... Oh, escape takes me to the menu. Okay, looks good right there. Like I told you, I am, like, brand new at this game right now. I don't know a whole lot about it. So we can make a workbench right there out of 10 wood. Let's go ahead and do that. And I'll probably drop it right there. And we'll pick it up in just a minute. That's going to expand our crafting menu a little bit. Oh, there's a crafting wind. Oh, we'll just do that. That seems a lot easier. So we can make stone walls if we wanted to. We can make a wooden fence. Oh, there's wooden armor now? If you collect and put on a full set, I remember that being a thing where if you collect a full set of armor that all matches, you get some kind of bonus most of the time. Like sometimes you move faster, you attack faster, things like that. If you have suggestions for the playthrough, by the way, go ahead and leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to acquiesce to your demands and try and make this as entertaining as possible. I'm about to get pistol whipped by a slime because they're grumpy. And so let me go ahead and get rid of them. Why they're so grumpy, I can't really tell you. I assume it's just because they're off their, I don't know, off their Zoloft or something. Let's see here. We go, I need, I think I need wood walls, and that seems pretty good to me. And what's that going to cost me? What if I wanted to make a wood wall right here? What's going to happen? Oh, it just takes you straight to it. Okay, that makes sense. And so if I just click this on through, if I right click, yeah, I remember something like that being in the game. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'll take that down by about 200. It looks like we don't actually need as much wood as I collected. And I think nighttime is coming, so let's jump out of this menu. I'm going to take the 5 key. And we may actually have to pin ourselves in for the night just to make this effective. Oh, that's going to be a back wall for us. Okay, so that's fine then. I could use a back wall. So we'll take that to right there. And if we wanted to just make a lumber house, could I just use this right here? There's a golden bunny? What does a golden bunny do? Let's murder it. It doesn't do anything. It gets consumed by a slime. That's disappointing. Well, like, what's so special about a golden bunny? Did I just do something horrible? Is there going to be a golden bunny death boss that's coming now? Damn it. Uh, oh, that's not what I wanted either. Okay, so I'll pickaxe you. Let's see if we can get this going. So I'm going to go, like, up a little ways. Yeah, that seems all right. And then I'll probably take it up to there. And then maybe we'll go... Nope, that's not what I wanted, but I'll clean that up in just a second. Oh, I can't get it from right here? Why can't I get it from right here? Ugh. All right, well, I got you right there. We'll go off to this end. We're just going to make a little house for right now. We can spend time expanding later if we want to. And then we'll go up to there. Yeah, that seems all right. And I don't know if this is lining up properly. It looks about right from there. Is that too high? No, that looks about right. And so we got to take that to right there. Good, good, good. I don't know if I want to do that right now. Looks a little bit weird. Either way, we need to be inside a house by the time night gets here. So let's go ahead and just put a roof on this beezy. There it is. Nice and easy. And so let's get inside the heezy now that we put the reezy up on the heezy. And so we'll go in here. There we go. Been hanging out with Snoop Dogg too much lately. And then we'll put in some walls real fast. This is going to be a very, very simple house. I plan on doing something way better later on. But it's going to be a work in progress, and I don't really know how to do this stuff because I don't play, like, building crafting games very often. I play a lot of sandbox survival games, but I don't play games like this very often where you can actually, like, morph the game world to your will. And so if you guys want me to do, like, speed builds or something like that to make it all easier, I will consider that for sure. See if I can get some of that in there right there. Yep. I remember there being, like, a grappling hook or something that makes your life a lot easier when you're trying to... What the hell was that noise? Did you guys hear that? It sounded like an evil satanic duck. I don't know what that was. All right, so that's not going to line up very well on that side. But I need a door now. So let's jump up in here. She'll make a wooden door. And so now that we have a wooden door, we'll throw that in right there. And for the remainder of our housing, we need torches too. How many slimes do I have? 
enough. Okay, so let's make a bunch of torches for right now because we're going to need a lot of those. And so now that we got torches in that slot, let's go ahead and take the door. We'll drop it right there. We'll flip that on open. I need my workbench back. And then we'll take the torches. And let's just illuminate. Let's make this a little bit brighter inside of here. There we go. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to have to get a hammer and beat out those walls right there. So that finally they'll be out of the way and this will look all smooth. I can't do it for right now. Please don't shoot my house with arrows. This is not a target practice range. This is not for you, Andrew. This is Man, you got pretty good aim, man. I'm going to start calling you Deadeye. Calm down, Hawkeye. Killing off all the slimes before I get there. All right, let me kill this one. And I think at night, bad things are going to happen to us. Like, I, I'm pretty sure there are things that can, like, break through your door and stuff once you get here at night. If it gets too rowdy, what I'll do is I'll brick this off real fast and I'll just make this closed. But let's see what we can accomplish with the things that we have in our inventory right now. So we got our workbench back. I'm just going to drop that. Actually, we should probably put in flooring, shouldn't we? Yeah, let's put in flooring. I'd like to have a stone floor, but for right now, a wood floor will do. There we go. And to stop monsters spawning, as I remember, you have to put in a back wall and you have to have walls around it too. And from then on, monsters can't spawn inside your house. But up until that point, don't feel too confident. They may come after you. There it is. Okay, so we got the floor, and that looks much better. Absolutely much better. Not much of a foundation, though. We're going to be in trouble if there's an earthquake. It's going to be a little bit rowdy. I think like a Californian in these situations because I'm both a geologist and I live in California where there's earthquakes like every eight seconds. And so, you know, it's definitely one of those things that I tend to think about. Oh, look, there's a zombie over here. Does it have a hat on? What's up with that zombie? Hold on. Let me put a runway out here of light. The runway of light so that our enemies will be illuminated, that we might fire upon them with all of our ordinance. Okay, so there... Are zombies scary? Like, what do they do now? Like, can a zombie hurt me? Does he do anything other than, like, walk into my blade? The answer would appear to be no. Oh, they drop a bunch of treasure, though, so 52 copper sounds pretty good. Huh. Alright. What's up with that zombie right there? Why does he have weird, like, jiggle arms? It looks like his torso is just like one giant mass of misery. Ew, I chopped... Something's falling off of him. Are those arrows? What were those? Oh, he's actually covered in arrows. That's what those are supposed to be. Okay. That's kind of cool. These mushrooms heal us, by the way. I don't know if I brought that up ever at any point, but... You eat mushrooms in this game to get healthier. Just It is what it is. Every now and again, you gotta do some shrooms in order to make your health better. I don't judge. Whatever helps you through the day and makes you not break down... Have anxiety attacks and all that. Chop down a couple more trees. I should probably be replanting these too. Just in case we run out of wood sources. We do have a lot of acorns. I don't see any enemies out here. Ooh, there's a big copper deposit right there. Is that a floating eyeball? Oh, Jesus. Okay, so there's a floating eyeball right there. No, go away, floating eyeball. I know loves ya. Oh, that's pretty easy. Okay, well then I'm going to pin you right here. Reminds me of the flying eyeballs. I don't know if that's what it's a reference to, but there used to be flying eyeballs. I don't know if there are anymore, but there used to be flying eyeballs in Castlevania. I remember them in Simon's Quest. That was the only Castlevania I had when I was a kid. I can already hear people being like, what? You brought up Simon's Quest? And I was like, yes, I brought up Simon's Quest because that's the Castlevania game that I had when I was a kid. Everybody else had the good Castlevania games. I had the crappy one. And my friends would come over and they'd be like, oh, dude, you've got a Castlevania game? I've never seen this one before. And then they'd play it for like eight seconds. What a horrible night for a curse. And they would be like, wow, this game is actually not that good. And I'd be like, yep, because it's Simon's Quest. It's one of those weird bastardized constant, like Castlevania games that nobody really cared about. And it just wasn't very good. And I beat it, too, if I remember right. I think I've beaten Simon's Quest. I think I spent like an entire summer one time just playing it over and over and over again. Oh, my God, it's so dark. I think it had a password. I don't recall. I think Simon's Quest had a password that you would put in. And it had this weird gem trading mini game where you had to walk around trading gems. Like in the beginning of the game, somebody gave you like a white crystal. And then from then on, oh, we're about to get dive bombed. This is not good. Are the different colored eyeballs, do they do different things? Because that one's green. So does that mean he's just really, really new at being a flying eyeball? He doesn't have the experience. He's wet behind the ears if he had any. Die! Haha, -ha, another enemy has been slain. It's a little bit weird how all the currency in this game has like a jet trail that follows it around. What is that, a firefly? Ooh, I love firefly. It's one of my favorite things in the whole world. If there isn't a season two within the span of my lifetime, I will be very, very upset. And when I get to the pearly gates, I will be like, so... So what was up with that pertinent deity? Whichever paradise I have arrived in. What's going on... You know, deity in charge, what's up with the fact that you never allowed a second season of Firefly to be made? Was that just like a test? 
Or was it something to just make our willpower stronger? Like, I feel like you probably had some creative control over this, considering it's the greatest thing ever created in sci-fi. And so, you know, I, I really expect some answers right now. Like, what did you... Why am I hitting him with an axe? Oh, jumping over you. That's right. Okay, so we're going to get him real fast with our stabby. How long is the night time? This seems like it's a little bit overly long. I may start skipping this in the future if it ends up being something that, like, bores people. I don't know. That one's got, like, a plant growing out of the back of his head. That seems unpleasant. That's one of my worst nightmares. I talked about that in another series, but seriously. My dad told me one time that this kid got, like, a strawberry seed in his nose, and it grew into a plant, like, inside of his nose. And ever since then, I don't know if that story is even true or if he was just messing with me. But ever since then, I have, like, a huge fear of things, like, growing inside my body. I'm just like, nope. Can't deal with it. Not at all. It should be daytime soon. That's what it needs to be. Go away, evil creatures of the night. I can't defend my home any longer from your advances. I need to sleep at some point. I am really, I'm one of those individuals. Ooh, we got a lens. That's pretty cool. Sleep is required for me as an individual. If I don't sleep, I become very bitchy. I become grouchy, and I just have a problem with everything. Let's put in some torches. Maybe out here a little ways. I'm going to try and get that copper deposit. Oh, there's two of them. Okay, so let's get this copper deposit while we wait. I don't want to completely and totally waste my time. Did I just murder a worm with a pickaxe? What was the point of... Oh, he just bullied his way straight through that, didn't he? Okay, well, I'm going to keep stab... Ooh, he's like leveled up or something. He's been hanging out. Been grinding them boars. Been getting himself all nice and strong. Here, die. All day long, die. There we go. So you have now been defeated, and your copper is mined by right of combat. We also need stone, so I should probably start picking away at that, too. Yeah, there we go. Good, 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 good. And so we got some stuff over here. I'm going to try and get at that as well. It's a very relaxing game. At least it can be relaxing when you're not dying and losing when things are going absolutely insane. I remember goblin invasions being the thing that drove me crazy with this game. Like, I got a goblin invasion and it essentially just, like, ended my game because I couldn't stop them. And they just rolled out on me. It happened on, like, the fourth night or something like that. Like, I don't remember how I got a goblin invasion so early, but it totally ruined one of my playthroughs because I couldn't go any further. I had, like, copper armor. I was fighting off a goblin invasion with, like, goblin wizards that had all kinds of crazy laser eyes and Xavier X-Men powers. It was ridiculous. Hmm. I would very much prefer it if all of you would go away and stop trying to be inside my domicile. I suppose I could just close the door. That would be the logical thing to do right now. But this seems like a good opportunity for me to farm up a little bit of cash. And I think if I'm right, with the lenses, you can make, like, steampunk goggles out of those. And they're super badass, and so I kind of want to do that. If I have to, I'll just cut this episode a little bit longer and not worry about it, but take care of him. Come on, buddy. You know you want to drop down in here. There we go. Get the combo. That one-two stab. It's kind of like a one-two punch, but a little bit more efficient. Come on. Oh, I ran right into him. Lost 15 HP. Disappointing, but at least it's divisible by five. Those of you that know me here at the channel know that I like things to be divisible by five. Numbers that are prime, things like that, I, I don't like that very much at all. I don't like prime numbers one little bit. Numbers are supposed to be divisible by something. And unfortunately, when they're divisible by nothing but themselves and one, it makes me upset. So we got another lens right there. Daybreak should be coming pretty soon. What day will break, I'm not really sure. Day's got a horrible, horrible temper, so every now and again it just rampages through and wipes everything out. For a legendary sword, this doesn't appear to be doing very well. Well, it does a lot more damage, though, so starter gear, what are you going to do? That legendary starter gear. Obviously, we bought the the twenty dollar like starter pack, so you get all the cool like free to play gear. It gives you one leg up over everybody else. There we go. That's a joke about the MMO industry. I don't know if it was clear enough, so I figured I would extrapolate a little bit further, so that people are like, wait, Terraria is not free to play. It's I need to jump on Steam, right? It's free to play now. Ooh, free to play Terraria. Hooray for me! Let's go ahead and wipe that out. Grab a couple of coppers. Oh no. I almost got trapped in a pit with a zombie. That would have been lame. They would have eaten me to death. They would have beat me and eat me, and it would have made me sit. <gasps> a star! That didn't... Oh, no, 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 no! That didn't do what I expected it to do, but... Here, let's just start stabbing away at these zombies. Oh, my God, there's so many of them. Okay, so don't advance. That's what I learned today. There we go. Just keep ping-ponging them back. There it is. And then I want that star right there. My jumping skills lack. If we get a couple of these stars, if I remember right, you can turn them into, like, their ammo for one of the guns at the end of the game. 
So you get like a gun that can fire the stars at some point and it does like insane damage to undead creatures or something like that. And then if you get 10 of them, you can make them into mana potions maybe. You used to start with no mana and you actually had to get your first 10 mana. At least now they're gracious enough to give it to you. On this side, it looks like it disappears after sunrise. Yeah, I remember that being the case. So we got a couple of lenses. Other than that, we didn't really accomplish much. So for right now, oh, we survived our first night. They should go away in just a second. I think they turn around and about face and go elsewhere. Yeah, so there it is right there. Like, ah, arbitrary daylight. We got to leave right now, guys. I forgot to put on my SPF 900. I'm going to burn in the sun. We got to go. I'm going to blister. Let's be up out of here. I don't want to spend the next week just cradling a bottle of aloe vera and hoping for the pain to stop. I don't think if you attack them, anything will happen either. I'm going to go down and get this copper right here. So normally what I do is I build a house, and then I make a deep shaft over here, giggity. And once that shaft is completed, I just start exploring caves, and that's how I experience the game. Once I've got decent gear like iron armor or whatever, I tend to, like, explore the surface. We'll play around with that a little bit later, though. For right now, I think it's time to break off the episode. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the first episode of Terraria Uno. Point Trace. I look forward to seeing you all in the future. Hi do out there everybody and I hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think about this series. Seriously, this is one that I was a little bit on the fence about. I wanted to play the game and I was going to do it in my free time. I had no idea if this was something that the Nerd Castle wanted to see along the way and so I figured I would just throw on some recording software and have a good time. If you ended up liking it and you think you want it to stay, please be very, very vocal about it because at this point there's not a whole lot of games coming out on Steam right now that are indie titles and so I'm just sort of treading water until we have another like heyday of indie releases. I'll see y'all later. Hi do everybody.